Allah. Oke okay, tamam. Bismillah. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahirabbil alamin. Allahumma salli wa sallim ala sayidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi fi kulli lahdatin abada ardani amillahi wa afdalihi. Allahumma atina min ladunka rahmah wa 'allimna min ladunka 'ilma. Subhanaka la 'ilma lana illa ma 'allamtana innaka antal 'alimul hakim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Nawaina ta'alluma wa ta'alim wa tadzakkura wa tadzkir wa nafa' wa intifa' wa rifada wa istifada. Wal hatha 'ala at-tamassuk bi kitabillahi wa sunnati rasulihi sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam wa du'a ila al-huda wa dalalah 'ala al-khair ibtigha'a wajhi Allah maradatihi wa qurbihi wa thawabihi subhanahu wa ta'ala ma'a lutfin wa 'afiyatin bi rahmatika ya arhamar rahimin Allahumma inna nas'aluka al-'ilma ladunni mashrab as-safi al-hani ya wahhab ya ghani اللهم إنا نسألك العلم لدني مشرب الصافي لهني يا وهاب يا غني اللهم إنا نسألك العلم لدني والمشرب الصافي لهني يا وهاب يا غني اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم ألهمنا علم نفقه به أو مركا ونواهيك وارزقنا فهما نعرف به كيف نناجيك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم إنا نسألك فهم النبيين وحفظ المرسلين وإلهام الملائكة المقربين في عافية يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم أغننا بالعلم وزينا بالحلم وأكرمنا بالتقوى وجملنا بالعافية يا أرحم الراحمين آمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم إنا نستودعك ما قرأناه وما نقرأه في هذا المجلس وما قبله وما بعده فاحفظه علينا حتى ترده إلينا وقت احتياجنا إليه يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم يا معلم إبراهيم علمنا ويا مفهم سليمان فهمنا ويد ويا مؤتي داود الحكمة آتنا الحكمة وأصلحنا اللهم أكرمنا بنور الفهم وأخرجنا من ظلمات الوهم وافتح لنا أبواب رحمتك وانشر علينا حكمتك يا أرحم الراحمين آمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم يا من مقاليد الأمور كلها بيده وإليه يرجو العمر كله يا فتاح يا عليم يا فتاح يا عليم يا فتاح يا عليم افتح علينا فتحا قريبا وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي وسدد لساني وهدي قلبي وافعل كذلك بأحبابي أبدا وارزقنا كمال فتوح العارفين والفقه في الدين مع كمال إخاص صدق واليقين والعافية والغنى والنصر والحفظ والنفع والانتفاع وخيرات الدارين وعلوم الأولين والآخرين آمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم والحمد لله رب العالمين الفاتحة الحمد لله الحمد لله الحمد لله Bismillah. Um, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Right, so we are right at the part where uh, the brother, the oldest brother, 
of Nabi Yusuf alayhi uh, salam, he sees what has happened and, uh, with his youngest brother, uh, Binyamin, uh, and he has decided to stay uh, in Egypt. And he's giving instruction to his uh, other brothers. Right? So they all go back to Egypt. And he said that it's not that every single time they go to they go back to Canaan. He said that it's not every single time when they go back to Egypt that all of them go. Right? It's a group of them that actually, they actually go. Right? Especially um, the last time round, right? whereby when they go back to Egypt, they were not actually looking to take um, food. Right? Because with, with the first time, all of them were there. Right? Because um, the Egyptians, right? so the, the minister, Nabi Yusuf, alayhi salam, right? he will only give two individuals. Right? So every individual gets a pack. I guess, uh, I guess like a food uh, pack, right, in a sense. Lah, right? So you can't take for other people, right, in a sense. right? So because otherwise, and this to be fair, lah, it's only those who come, right, they can take and, they, and they, they're also allowed to take for um, women, right, the women in, in their families right, and so on. Lah, right? so, so it was, but, but for men, they had to actually go there themselves and, and get their, uh, their packs right, as, as what was, as what is explained to us, you know, in the, um, in the tafsir. Right? So it was the last trip especially whereby they didn't actually go back to get any food, but they went back on their father's uh, instruction, go back um, and, and search for Yusuf and his brother. Right, so again, Nabi Yaqub, he's not letting go of, you know, mashallah, he's not letting go of um, that Yusuf is still around, he's alive. And Nabi, has, Nabi Yaqub, he has, no, he has no doubts whatsoever Nabi Yusuf is still uh, alive, you know, subhanAllah. And it's, it's interesting, you know, and we're going to go through, like, inshallah, um, the entire advice that Nabi Yaqub uh, gave to his brother, to, to, his, to his sons, you know, it, it's, it's, a, it's, it's, it's so, because when you, when you, when you, whenever you analyze the speech of prophets, you see it's so profound. You know, mashallah, they direct you in a way and they, they shape your mentality, prophets, right? So it's not a matter of, you know, just trying to solve the problem, but it's a matter of nurturing human beings. And they are so focused on that. And sometimes, a lot of times, actually, in fact, a lot of times, when we are around other human beings, right, and we see something wrong, especially those who are younger than us, than we children and so on, right, we are so focused on the problem and getting the problem solved that we don't actually look at the learning process. Right? And then we miss the entire thing. And we just miss the entire thing. And then and the child ends up, you know, just, just trying to seek solution, right, but without actually learning right, anything right, from the entire experience, especially learning lessons with regards to their relationship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Prophets do this. Right? All the prophets do this. Any issue in life, they will point you to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? Because it is a waste of life, you will see. It is a waste of life. That you go through problem after problem and you don't actually see in these problems lessons with regards to the most important relationship in your life, which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the problem of the problem in life, right? If you're not learning through your problems how to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you're wasting your life, technically. You're wasting your time. What are you doing? You know, going through problem of the problem. You're not actually learning to get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. MashaAllah, this is why we study prophets. You know, this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, has sent prophets and Allah has quoted the, the speech of prophets that happened thousands of years ago for us today to hear what they say. This is our lesson for today, inshallah. Right? To actually analyze the words of Nabi Yaqub, alayhi salam. Right? Something that, that, that Allah captured that was between him and his sons. And, that was, and they were the only human beings who heard what Nabi Yaqub had to say right, to them. But it is a lesson that Allah has captured and that Allah has, as you would say, um, eternalized. <laughs> SubhanAllah, Mr. Hestan, how, how Allah has done his entire thing, mashallah. And Allah has eternalized in the words of the Quran to be recited by human beings till the day of judgment. And you will hear this, you know, mashallah. And, and mashallah, if you've gone through like other surahs, like, like Surah Yasin, right, the words of the man, Habibun Najjar, right, the man who came from the furthest part of the, of the city, he came running to his people, and he, he had his full da'wah speech going on in Surah Yasin. And Allah immortalized, <laughs> that, you know, Allah eternalized that da'wah speech that happened in Surah Yasin till today, that man. Uh, whoever he was, Habibun Najjar, you know, he was an unknown person. Allah mentioned in the Quran, man, there was a man, you know, subhanAllah, but we only know his name through the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Allah immortalized that da'wah that did not benefit his people at all. Right? There was no benefit whatsoever. They killed him, right, eventually. They, hit, they, 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 um, they had him, uh, they, they, they tied him down and they crucified him, yeah. They crucified him. 
um, and he went to paradise. And and in fact, Allah also immortalized. Since Allah, Allah also uh, eternalized his speech in paradise, which nobody heard. <laughs> only Allah heard what he said. You know, when he goes to paradise, he says, "Oh, if only my people knew of how my Creator forgave me and has ennobled me." What he has said as an exclamation in paradise, Allah puts it in the Quran. And for all of us, us today to be witnesses and to be in an audience to this amazing story of the man in Surah Yasin. And this is what nothing that, that we see in the Quran that is, it is amazing. That you're, you're going into very private conversations that Allah has eternalized to our time. Because the lessons us the, the lessons at the end of time are the most important lessons for human beings to understand. MashaAllah. As it says, so the, oldest, the oldest son says, Irji'u ila abikum faqulu ya abana inna ba'naka saraqa wa ma shahidna illa bima alimna. And it's, so he says, Irji'u, return to your father. Right, ila abikum faqulu and say, Oh, our father, for surely your son stole. And they know that this statement is a, <laughs> it's, it's an unlikely statement. Right? But, but, and this is why they had to follow up with the second statement. And we only, is, and, 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 all, all what we're saying is just what we, we know. We only saw what we saw. We saw it was in his bag. That was all we saw. We know he's, he's, he's not a thief. He's not a thief, but, what we saw, we saw. We saw what we saw. You know, subhanAllah. I should have to bring that to Nabi Yaqub. وَمَا كُنَّا لِلْغَيْبِ حَافِظِينَ And they had a sense something else was going on. Right? So they had a sense. Because it's such a, it's such a, you know, out of character thing for Benjamin to do. Right? It's so out of character right, of Benjamin to do this. So they didn't know something is up. But they can't put their finger on it, what is up. Right, so they say that وَمَا كُنَّا لِلْغَيْبِ حَافِظِينَ And we are not guardians of the unseen. Right, we're not what had, what the unseen meaning what is you know what is behind closed doors, right, of secrets of whispers. Right, we can't we, we we don't have knowledge of this stuff. We know something else is going on, but we have no idea what. Right, so Subhanallah. And the thing about it was that Benjamin didn't even resist. And so when he was taken into, you know, like so-called, uh, when he was taken uh, to be imprisoned or to be enslaved, there was no resistance from Benjamin. And so it was, it was something if, let's say, he, you know, he, he denied stealing or he tried to argue or to fight his way out of it. And then you have a case. If someone actually wants to get out of it, you can actually help them. But when they don't want to get out of it, <laughs> you can't actually do anything. No matter how much you think that they shouldn't be, you know, um, uh, enslaved or whatever they're going through, it shouldn't, shouldn't be happening. If they themselves don't want to put in the effort, then you, no matter what, and so many, so many issues in life is like that. You meet people that you, you tell, that they're in issues and situations, but they themselves don't want to bring themselves out of it. So no matter, you, you cannot, you can't do anything because it's involved, it involves involves them, and they're not, they're not. Interested or they're not, I don't know, whatever lie. <laughs> like they don't want to they don't want to get out of the situation. So you just okay lah. <laughs> yeah, you move on in the subhanallah. And so they say we, we know something is not right, right? We know that he's not a thief, right? But we saw what we saw and we don't know what is hidden. Right? This is a secret from us. Right? So the oldest brother says, go back to their father. They must tell the truth of the situation to their father, which they did. Which they, did. they told their father exactly what happened. Right? That his son was a thief. Right? Um, and in fact, I should, you know, this is actually not so, not so accurate. They didn't say sariq. They said saraqa. Right? And there's a big difference between the usage of verb and noun in Arabic. Right? Also in English. Right? The, word, the, the verbs and the nouns have a big difference in usage. Right? So, Nouns are not time based. Right? Not, they're not attached to a time frame. Right? Whereas verbs are. Right? So if you call someone a teacher, their very being is that they are they are teachers. Right? That is what I am, this is what we are. We're teachers. But if someone is teaching, right, or someone taught, they are not necessarily teachers, but they taught for that moment of time. It has happened and he's gone. And we spoke about this earlier on in the previous uh, lessons. Right? So when he says, right, it's a past tense, it happened once. 
And one time it happened, that was it. Uh, but you say, Inna benna ka sariq. Uh, if you say, Inna benna ka sariq, right, for surely your son is a thief. Uh, that is to label the person, you're a thief. Uh, right, so instead of saying, your son stole. Right, so it's really inaccurate, the, 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 the notes here. Uh, inaccurate. And your son stole, past tense, one time. It was a one-time situation. Same thing about, uh, also thing also about lied and liar. Right, so when someone calls you a liar, right, that is more offensive than to say you lied about this. But to say you're such a liar. Oh, that means you just label that person that it is your trait, your quality that you lie. <laughs> and then you're like, wait, 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 call me liar. <laughs> get upset. But if someone said, hey, you lied about this. You can, you can, you can admit, yeah, I lied about it. <laughs> so, sorry, la. You know, I had no choice. Right, but, but maybe you could say something about it. La. But if someone calls you, you're, you're such a liar. Uh, then you're like, yes. Just labeled me, <laughs> you know, as a liar. Uh, same thing, eh? So the, the difference between noun and verbs is a, is a very, very big difference in noun and verbs. This is what the king's cup discovered and taken out from their from their brother's load, which proved that he had committed theft right, at that situation, at that point. Nevertheless, they started to become aware of the hidden truth of the matter rested with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? They were aware or they were convinced something else was going on. Right? Which is why they spoke about the unseen. Interestingly, they used the word hafizin because that was what they mentioned earlier to their father. وَإِنَّ لَهُ لَحَافِظُونَ They said that right? we are guardians over him. Right, we're gonna guard over our brother when they try to convince their father, right? We are, we are, and and when they and when they spoke about Nabi Yusuf also earlier on, right? We're gonna guard over him, gonna guard over him, and then now they're coming. We're not guardians over the unseen, <laughs> you know. What, what we could guard over, we guarded over. They had promised to guard their their brother. They use the same word. Right? They promised. Inna lahu right? We promised we are guardians over our brother, and now they're like, but we're not guardians over the unseen. <laughs> We are human beings and we are limited in our ability. Um, and of course, their father knows all of this. La, right? The father knows. And, it's, and, it's, and, and we see this, actually there is a gentleness in the speech of Nabi Yaqub. Right? As compared to the first situation when Nabi Yusuf went missing, you see a sternness in the speech of Nabi Yaqub. Because the first time when Nabi Yusuf went spe- when, 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 when he came back without Nabi Yusuf, Nabi Yusuf was missing, um, they were lying, right? They were lying and they had done a terrible sin of getting rid of their brother, which could have amounted to murder, right? Because they, they, they had thrown him to the well. They, had, they, didn't, they did not at all ensure that he survived, at all. And it was, I mean, if you do that, for all you know, your brother starves in the well and dies in the well. And for all you know. Now how sure are you a traveler is going to go past and come to this very abandoned well and take water from that well and your brother would survive? How would you know that? Right? They didn't even ensure their brother survived. Right? They, they, technically, what they, had, what they had done was attempted murder. Lah, right? But I'm not sure what degree. Lah, but this kind of thing, but you do something and then you know it could amount to, 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 to death and just let it be. They had done that. That was the first thing they did. And so Nabi, Nabi Yaqub had shown a sternness towards them. You know, and, and to show sternness is a form of discipline. And Nabi, Nabi Yaqub and, and the prophets do use sternness. They, are, they, 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 they can form you know, a, a level of sternness and firmness against, you know, uh, uh, towards their children and towards the young ones. They do. Right? They do. And, then sometimes, and I'm mentioning this because sometimes you know, in, all, in, in our modern day, la, you know, in all these um, forms of gentle parenting and all that kind and we see Nabi Yaqub, he is a parent. He is parents of all the Muslims. You know, and so he handles the, the children and so on. Right? And you see that in our especially in our time, right? There is a whole there's a lot of um uh, material out there, right, that is not from our Prophet. So you cannot say that these things are correct. They are the opinions of other human beings. Right? It's, it's, that's, what, that's what they are. They are the opinions of other human beings. Even if they are the opinions of experts, experts also make mistakes. The only one who is absolutely correct is our Prophet. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his methods. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
So, you know, subhanAllah, you know, there the, are all kinds of methods online now. You can go and search like, all these books like, what's there, Bola, and Tama, like about, 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 you know, raising, raising children, right? But sadly, right, as Muslims, eh, we have not gone to the ways of the prophets and how they have handled their children. You know, subhanAllah. And in the Quran, there are many, many examples. You know, from Nabi Yaqub, should we mention Nabi Yusuf has enti- this entire study of how Nabi Yaqub handles his disobedient sons. And at this point, his sons are not disobedient, but they have failed. <laughs> like, they failed in something, not their fault. And you see how Nabi Yaqub responds. And then you, and then you see before that, whereby it was, you, don't, you don't call it a failure, but you call it treachery. They betrayed. Mm. It was something done on purpose. Right? It was an evil done on purpose. And they come back with their lie. Here, they really tried and they messed up. And you don't see Nabi Yaakob get angry with them. Mm. You don't actually see Nabi Yaakob get angry with them. Right? The first one, right, he did dismiss them. He dismissed them. Right? And that was his um, firmness and sternness right, towards them because they are adult children. We mentioned that before. Eh? They are adult children. So, Masha I'm because this earlier, just earlier before I came here, I was talking to my, my brother because my brother has a son, eight years old. Refuses to pray. That's all like, the story of our <laughs> a lot of them, like, right? Refuse, just refuses. Then I said, um, be firm. Right? Be firm on him. He's eight already. Next year nine. Right? Or some said at seven years old, command them to pray. He said, Oh, he said, but I but I thought you know be fierce. I'm not saying be fierce. I'm saying be firm. Right? Be firm and be stern. Right? So make them, he says, command them. He didn't say, he didn't say encourage them. Eh? He said, command them to the prayer at seven. Seven is a commandment. Encouragement is before that. Encouragement is from like three years old, four years old, five years old, six years old. All the way is encouragement, encouragement, encouragement. At seven, pray. But there's no hitting. Uh, there's, no, there's no punishment. There's no physical, but there's no physical punishment. So I corrected him. I said, there's no physical punishment, right? But there is a firmness at seven, right? You make them pray, right? So you can say things like, I will not pray until you pray next to me. Something like that. So I'm not hurting them, not doing anything, but they realize that they have to pray. Right? You have to pray as how I have to pray. So I'm not going to pray until you come here and pray next to me. It makes them get up because they realize that now you're not going to pray for as long as they don't pray. <laughs> they kind of think like, you don't, there's, no, there's no punishment. Uh, but it's basically, you know, we're going to do this together. You can, and, and also, not just that, but around the entire thing is a talk of prayer. Right? Salat, you know, it's a question to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those who pray, what are the rewards for them? Right? About Isra and the Mi'raj. It's a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There has to all this talk around it about Salat. Now, all this talk. Because the nafs is very heavy on Salat. The nafs. The nafs really, especially Subuh. Subuh and Isha. The nafs, and, and Asad, I'm going to add most everything. Eh? <laughs> right? Asad, Subuh sleepy. Zoho sleepy after school. And then Asad want to play. And then Maghrib hungry. And then Isha sleepy. This is all the, the, the story of the nafs. Nafs sleepy hungry, sleepy hungry, sleepy hungry. <laughs> and then now he's like, don't want to pray, don't want to pray, don't want to pray. You know, but, but basically you can do this. And I can say to him that if, you know, if, if, if it has, you know, you, you do incentives, right? Or take away privileges. And then he was like, but I thought, you know, nothing, cannot, cannot use anything negative. And I said, taking away privileges is not negative. Right, you're taking away a privilege. It's called a privilege. <laughs> right, privileges are not rights. They're privileges. Right, like, like when I with the homeschooling kids, I just introduced this, this new system. Because they keep forgetting their, their miswak. This is the kids. Lah. That's besar besar get forget their miswak. So now, to them, it's a big deal to be the khalifa of the class. To be the monitor. So now I say, whoever forgets miswak for three times in a row, don't get to be khalifa for one month. Uh, so it's, there's no punishment. And it says, there's no, I'm not hurting them. Like, I'm gonna, but it's a big deal to them. Uh, you don't get to be khalifa for one month. You don't bring siwak for three times in a row. Oh, should we everybody bring siwak? <laughs> they kind of think, uh, can I do it to five years old, five years old? Yes, I can. I'm not hurting them. Uh, but, but there has to be a, a firmness because you're trying to train them on something. Right? If you just don't care, they also don't care. <laughs> 
right? And if you're not going to be firm about it, they're, not, they're, not, they're never going to be serious about it. So if you see them play, play at eight years old through Margaret to Isha, playing the blocks, playing the Legos, and this is my, my nephew, la, playing with Legos, through Margaret to Isha, don't want to get up to play Margaret, something has to be done. <laughs> he's eight, he's going to be nine soon, next year. You know, subhanAllah. So you're going to have to be firm. It's the thing that people um, have not taken the way of the Prophet. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to go to the house of Sayyidah Fatima al-Zahra and call out to the family of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to wake up for tahajjud. He will wake them up for tahajjud. He will call up to them. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to his own grandson, Sayyidah al-Hassan, Sayyidah al-Hussein, there was once, you know, someone had brought a, a basket of dates that was zakat. It was zakat dates. And it's haram on the family of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to take the zakat dates. So his own grandchildren who were very hungry and they were in poverty and they were small children had come, they had seen the, the basket of, 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 of dates and they took it. They took one and put it in their mouth. Rasam saw and he literally, he, 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 he got them to cough it out. Right? And they pulled out, he pulled out the dates from their mouth. Right? Because haram. Uh, and he understands haram. Like if you were to see your child put you know, like non-halal food into their mouth. You know, and you're like, you know, of us, you know, something like that is like, for example, you see, like, if they took pork or something, straight away, what will you do? You'll be like, oh, spit out. <laughs> right? I mean, you won't say, eh, kasihan lah, berat tu, he's hungry. You're like, oh. Right? Even if, he's, if the child is three years old, no doser. But I don't want, I don't want haram to enter the body of this, of this kid. <laughs> so you would do whatever it takes to pull it out. Like, would you say you're being cruel? You're being kind. And you're being, mashallah. So all these things, like, mashallah, we, we, we study prophets. Right? Learn what they do. Don't just read stuff out there and then wholesale, you know, apply whatever people say. You know, this kind of like upper freedom of uh, growing up. You know, you, you, know, you know freedom of growing what, what, they, what they call it? Uh? There's a sort of parenting. Uh, they call it upper child-led parenting. Me child-led parenting is nafsu-led parenting. Uh, eh? <laughs> they're, they're both of nafsu. <laughs> We are all balls of nafsu. We are all human beings full of nafs. If you don't read and you don't guide and you don't discipline with the sharia, you end up sleeping through subo. And you end up eating whatever you want to eat. And you end up hitting anybody you want to hit. Right? <laughs> so like child-like parenting. Child -like. Like, you're like, no, it's sharia led. Sharia led. The lights of sharia. Uh, that's how it's led. And then we see that in Prophet's very clear. You have a question? What's your question? What's your question? You saw that and not Margaret. <laughs> uh, those who saw that Margaret get a light until Isha. Then those who pray Isha get a light until Subo. MashaAllah. Eh? Allah loves those who saw that. Right, so now they're giving all the, the reasons eh, to try and prove themselves. Because second time they messed up. Right? So you see, so two similar situations. Right? The first and the second are two similar situations, but we see how prophets handle them. Right? To actually look at the reason why this happened. Right? So sometimes it's the same thing. Lah. You know, if you see a child come back, um, fill all the exams, fail all her exams. Right? You don't just scold them because they fail. Right? But you look at how the failure happened. Right? So if a child had put in all that effort and still come back with lousy results, right? if you scold, you are being an oppressor. Right? You are oppressive. Right? Because the, 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 the human being tried their best right? and still came back with those results. But if the human being, this, small, this child, uh, slacked the entire time, played, want to study, don't want to do anything, or what, go, go, to, go, to, go to exam, come back, lousy results. So, of course, you don't scold because of the results, but you scold because of the behavior. Right? The behavior early on, the, ne the neglectful behavior early on, which the scolding would have happened early on. <laughs> For the example, that does that, that scolding right? because of, of the um, laziness. Uh, and the nafs, the nafs. The nafs is naturally lazy. The nafs loves to lie down and sleep. The nafs loves to eat. The nafs loves to sanctify itself. And the nafs does not accept any blame. 
cannot have any blemish, cannot have any blame. And, and a lot of human beings have that. Right? So the moment you try and correct, the nafs comes up and then tries to defend. MashaAllah. MashaAllah, MashaAllah. So Imam Ghazali, he has, he has full study of the human being. So I mean, when, when you read the books of Imam Ghazali, you will like, wow, he's like, he has broken apart the human being to, into, into every problem the human being has. MashaAllah. Was Ali Qarya. Was Ali Qarya Talati Kunna Fiha. وَالْعَيْرَ الَّتِي أَقَبَلْنَا فِيهَا وَإِنَّا لَصَادِقُونَ Ah, mashallah. Right, so, so he says, And us, the town, or the, the Korea is the village, that we were in, and the caravan that we returned in, and ask them right, exactly what happened, they will tell you we, told, we, spoke, we spoke the truth. Right, and Nabi, and Nabi um, Yaqub knows that they are telling the truth, because they're giving, and, and right now, all their proofs are, are way better than the Nabi Yusuf's time. Right? And the thing is, this is what it is. When something is true, right, the truth is there already and all the proofs are already there. When something is true. When something is made up, when it's a lie, you have to make up the proofs. And the proofs will not make sense. <laughs> because they are made up. They're, they're made up proofs, so-called. So when Nabi Yusuf Alayhi early on, right, their proof was the shirt of Yusuf. And they had put blood on it right, to try and to try and prove it. But because it's a lie, I then there were there were flaws in the proof. Lah. Right, but here is a full proof. Uh it's a full proof. Proof. Like evidence, inshallah. I asked the township where we were and the caravan which with with which we traveled, like for for indeed we speak the truth. Mm. Okay. So they had proofs, right? Like uh, like how they tried to have early on. This one make more sense. Lah. If their father can't take their word, then there are people in the town and those in the caravan, they were traveling and they had witnesses. Uh, they had witnesses who could back up what they had to say. Right? And they assured him that they were truthful. They, they actually said this early on also with Nabi Yusuf's time, with Nabi Yusuf's uh, issue. Right? That we are truthful. But if you remember with Nabi Yusuf's issue, right, they had said, and you will not believe in us even if we were telling the truth. That was their statement. <laughs> Here you don't find that statement. And the, the, you remember that you're going to do like a, like a comparison eh? <laughs> like of the lie and the truth. How the speech really is very different. When someone's lying, they're so defensive. So defensive. And they, 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 they play with your mind, they're manipulative, they, they, they do reverse psychology, they do all these things. When someone's telling the truth, they're direct. It happened this way. There's nothing else we have to say. Uh, because you're confident. And your confidence is on that you are telling the truth. <laughs> There's no way around this. Right? But with the lie, you see how they twisted and they turned and they, and, they, and they had the entire crying going on and they came back late at night. Like it's a big drama that they had cooked up. And then it's all saying that we are truthful. They said, and you will not believe us even if we are truthful. Oh, this manipulation. <laughs> they were so manipulative, right, with the with the lie. But the truth straight straight sentences, all short sentences. Because the confidence is in the truth. But lie, they have to make this entire drama because there's nothing there. Uh, there's no substance. It's a lie. So they have to like cover up the emptiness of it by making a full drama around it. And that's how lie works. <laughs> and the human being is like that. Whenever they want to lie, it's going to be a big drama. But when they want to tell the truth, it's like one sentence, two sentences, then. Because truth is direct. <laughs> and lies are, are you know, a whole lot of, you say, a whole lot of fluff. You know, subhanAllah. So they assured him that they were true. We are truthful. Right? And they had to say this because they had lied before. Mm. And those who have been lying, right, when truth, when they have to say the truth, is difficult. And that's why the, the story of the boy who cried wolf, right, it is a very profound story. Right? And everyone knows the story of the boy who cried wolf. Right? Because the one who keeps lying, right, when you have to tell the truth, it's a problem. You have to actually prove that you are truthful. But if you keep being, if you're always truthful, you don't have to prove that you are truthful. Because you've always been truthful. Like the Prophet, right? not a single lie in his record. 
And so there is no need to actually prove that he was truthful, but because of the diseases in the hearts of these people, he had to still prove. Right? Because of, of their uh, envy against him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They needed him to believe in what they said. Right? And, and Nabi Yaqub knew they were telling the truth, which is why he sent them back right, to get uh, Benjamin. With Nabi Yusuf's story, he did not send them back. Right? Okay, must do a comparison. Eh? Okay, next time I do a table. I compare the first story <laughs> and the second story, put them side by side, and you can see the, the very clear difference between truth and lies, and then the response. As right? so Nabi Yaqub, if the first story of Nabi Yusuf, he didn't even bother. Because they're going to lie through their teeth the entire way. So he didn't say to them, go back and search for Yusuf. But of course they had come with that he's dead. And they, 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 and they maintained their, their, their statement, he's dead, he's dead. But here, you know, he, uh, uh, they, Nabi, Nabi Yaakob straight away sent them back. Go back and please find Yusuf. In that statement, eh? Yusuf and his brother. It wasn't Benjamin, no. Nabi, Nabi Yaakob mentioned Yusuf. After all these years, then he sent the brothers back to find Yusuf. When it first happened, he never sent the brothers back. Even though he knew Nabi Yusuf was not dead. Did not send the brothers back to find Yusuf. But now, and in fact, uh, some of the tafsirs, Omar, uh, because I go through Habib Omar's lessons for today's lessons, um, he mentioned that it was 80 years ago. It had been 80 years, right? Between when they threw Nabi Yusuf away to when Nabi Yaqub eventually got um, you reunited with Nabi Yusuf. They live long ages, lah. They, they, they live long. <laughs> they're only 80 years. And isn't that very long? <laughs> no, inshallah. Right, but that's how they were right, in the past. And they have long lives. And that is why the Ummah of Rasulullah is given Laylatul Qadr right, in Ramadan. Right, because Rasulullah would tell the Sahaba stories. And he would tell the Sahaba about a man of the Bani Israel right, who had spent 1,000 months. Uh, in jihad, fi sabilillah, a thousand months in prayer and fasting, a thousand months in studying the religion. And the Sahaba all felt sad. And they were like, Ya Rasulullah, we live for 60 years, 70 years, and we are dead. <laughs> and this man, like, 1,000 months do this, and 1,000 months do that, and 1,000 months do that. And they were like, Ya Rasulullah, we can't compete on the day of judgment. Yes, what competition is that? And you hear about Nabi Noah 950 years. <laughs> like, you hear about all these stories from Rasulullah. Islam. So they all were feeling sad. Then it says the tafsir of Surah, of surah Qadr. Like why it was sad now? Because the Sahaba were feeling sad like, about how much we miss out because our lifespan is so short. <laughs> and then Rasulullah kept, kept, kept silent, didn't respond. And then Allah revealed Surah Qadr. And in, so in Surah Qadr, Allah mentioned Alf Shahr. Like a thousand months, because it was because of the story of the man right, who spent a thousand months doing this and then whatsoever. So this gift of Surah Qadr happens once a year. You get that one night, and you're like people of the past, because a thousand months is eighty-three years and more, right? And and the surah says, "Khayyirum min alf shahr." Not, not it's not a thousand months. It's better than a thousand months if you get this one night right, in Ramadan. Laylatul. Qadr. Nah, mashallah. Right, so it is it's a gift. It's a gift. No, subhanallah. Right, so yeah, but anyway, the people of the past had long lives. But then we all, the Ummah of Rasulullah get shortcut one night. Uh, one night times, times, <laughs> times a long life. That one night is a, is a lifetime. Think about it. Eh? It's 80 years. Eh? More than that. 80 years. More than that. No, mashallah. That one night. Like every, if every year we get it, Means every year you add a lifetime of ibadah to your life. Mashallah. <laughs> Mashallah. For 10 years, if you do that, 800 years of ibadah. Mashallah. Right? You, used, you used to do the calculation again. Then, mashallah. Allah is so kind and generous and gentle with the ummah of Rasulullah. You will say that Allah spoil us. Right? In a sense, it is true. You look at all the, the ummah of the past, eh? we all can spoil. Because uh, the Umar, the, the, all the Umas of the, pla, of the past, the Umar of the past, the nations of the past, they all reject the message, can uh, wipe out, ah, can wipe out, can destroy it. That's it, done, finish. We all give, Allah give us chance, chance. 
<laughs> sins forgiven, sins forgiven, this and that. MashaAllah, MashaAllah, because the Ummah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Um, and so anyway, um, that that this big land and thing. So my grandmother was like, there was one night Ramadan, whereby she woke up in the night and then she was hungry, but there was no food in the kitchen. So she went to the tap, said Bismillah. She on the tap and milk came out. So that so some people they get it, <laughs> they get it, and it was Laylatul Qadr. It was Laylatul Qadr. Uh, milk, milk came out from the from the tap and she drank milk to her fill. It was milk. Uh, in the morning it was water again. <laughs> Just for the night, it was milk. That's what I think people experience. Lah. Uh, so if, you, if that's your question, <laughs> only for special people, yeah lah. <laughs> right, but you can ask Allah, because the karam, the generosity is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You can ask Allah lah, for some experience, eh, not experiences. In la tukadr, show me lah, something I want to see. <laughs> you know, mashallah. Some people, they see all kinds of things. I mean, they, 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 see, um, they can see the three sujood, Allah Tal Qadr, right? they can see the angels coming down. Animals see. And it, because it's like any, the one of the signs of Tal Qadr is that, you know, like Taswil Tal Qadr, you know. <laughs> right? uh, the animals in this, um, the reason why on the Tal Qadr, then the dogs don't bark. And my cats, they, they also, like, they, 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 they will crouch on the nights of Tal Qadr because the angels come down. And the angels fill up the earth, like, really, like you said, it's crammed with angels. To the skies, tramp, every angel in paradise comes down. Mm. And Jibril comes down. He stops coming down anymore. I mean, Jibril has stopped coming down because no more prophets. Right? But Jibril comes down on Laylatul Qadr. Uh, so the animals witness the whole earth filled up with Laylatul Qadr. Right? Back to back, it's, it's, it's really like jam packed with angels. Animals can see. This is why the dogs don't bark. <laughs> you see all the angels everywhere. <laughs> Right, and then and 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 uh, and if you look at your cats, your animals, my cats will, will flatten their ears on the night of the Qadr and they would they would look they would look they would look strange lah. They would just crouch at them. They would, <laughs> they'd be like, see angels or kami shaitan right because Ramadan can. <laughs> so must be my like cat, right? <laughs> inshallah my like cat. <laughs> you know, inshallah. Right, so um you know, inshallah, inshallah. So if you want to experience and in fact that the ulama, the scholars they say that um, when the angels come down on Latul Qadr, uh, the angels actually go around the earth to congratulate all those who are awake in worship. They actually go around congratulating. And they say, how do you know that the angels congratulate you? Right? And they say that it is like this. Like when you, if you are praying and you are worshipping on Latul Qadr, right? when an angel comes and congratulates you, they will actually embrace you to congratulate you. And when an angel embraces you, you will suddenly feel the breaking of your heart. For no reason. Nothing. You're praying, best of best of praying. Suddenly, out of nowhere, you feel your heart breaking and you will cry nonstop. And you have no idea why. Like in your prayer. And you feel this spiritual high that will happen because you're right, touched by an angel. Eh? <laughs> because you have been embraced by an angel. And the mashallah, these are all the signs that you have been, you have been congratulated. You found it, uh, you found it, <laughs> you got it, <laughs> you know, mashallah. So these experiences, to answer your question, some people get. Uh, some people don't. Right? Some people, they can pray the entire night and not feel anything. It's possible. Right? But, but if you've ever experienced the Qadr, it's, it's those kind of experiences that if you go for Hajj, it's like, like the, 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 the whole spiritual um, high, lah. And it's a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's a gift from Allah. Ask Allah, lah, inshallah, every year, ask Allah, let me taste it. I want to taste it. I want to feel a closeness. I want to, I want to feel the angel hug me. I want to, qadr, I want to feel it. <laughs> no, mashallah. They hug people, you know. When you're praying on Atul Qadr, they will help you, congratulate you. Say, congratulations. Inshallah. Okay, okay. Now, Atul Qadr. Right. Oh, mashallah. Um, uh, so he said, قَالَ بَلْ سَوَّلَتْ لَكُمْ أَنفُسُكُمْ أَمْرَ فَصَبْرٌ جَمِيلٌ عَسَى اللَّهُ أَنْ يَأْتِيَنِي بِهِمْ جَمِيعًا إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْعَمِيمُ الْحَكِيمُ Right, so Nabi, Nabi, Nabi Yaqob, he responds, rather, uh, it has been made easy for yourselves a matter than beautiful patience. I choose beautiful patience. And then he continues and says that maybe Allah will bring them back to me. Right, I hope that Allah will bring them all of them back uh, to me, all of them meaning all three. 
right? His oldest, Nabi Yusuf and Benjamin. He's talking about all three. Right? He is all-knowing. He is all-wise. Right? So, Nabi Yaqob, he says this, right? And here he said, is he blaming them about Benjamin? They know. The same statement that he's saying here, the first part of his statement is still talking about Nabi Yusuf. Right? And we know he's talking about Nabi Yusuf because of the second part of the statement. Right, so his blame here is not about Benjamin or whatsoever because he's still alive, he's in Misr and so on. And he later on gives solution to his children. The first part, he's still reprimanding his kids about Yusuf. He's still reprimanding them. Your souls have made the matter light for you. Talking about what? Not Benjamin, Yusuf. So still years later, still talking to them about Yusuf. You all have made this matter so light and you have just dismissed this matter about Yusuf. And then, it's, it's why the statement goes into, may Allah bring all of them back to me. I know he's alive. Uh, inshallah. Like someone who is convinced that he's dead will not say, may Allah bring them back to me. And Arabic is very, is very subtle. If he meant two of them, uh, he will say two. There is a dual form in Arabic. But he used a plural form. Uh, so he meant three. There were three eh, who are missing. For surely Allah knows and Allah is wise. As so Allah knows, Allah knows what you have done and Allah knows the truth. Allah is wise because Allah has allowed for this to happen. And Allah has separated him from his son all these years. So he trusts the wisdom of Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. As so Nabi Yaakob, you see this redha, eh? a very deep, very strong redha. No, like you know, he knows he knows this whole thing. If Allah wants it to come to an end, it can come to an end any moment. But Allah has allowed for it to last for 80 years. I really read all whatever Allah has decreed. No question, you know, on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When the brothers like faking sadness, right? When the brothers faking sadness. Um, brought Yusuf's bloody shirt to their father. They said that Yusuf had been eaten by a wolf. Nabi, Nabi uh, Yaqob right, said that they had, their souls had made up something which they had found attractive. I said, no, now two sons have been taken away from him. He repeats the same statement. Uh, in, Yusuf, in Yusuf's affair, the brothers had committed treason and planned conspiracies, while in Benjamin's affair, it was not the case. Right? So it said that um, the facts surrounding the other two so basically, he is so again. Eh, so, so, so in the tafsir, Nabi Yaqob is referring to the story about Nabi Yusuf. He's still he's pointing to the story of Nabi Yusuf. He's not blaming them about, about Benjamin, but he's blaming them about the first the first brother, right, the first son that you all got rid of. That one, inshallah. And they haven't taubat. Eh? I remember at the, in the beginning of the story they said that we're going to get rid of him, and then we will be amongst the righteous. They said that. Right, they had planned to be righteous after they got rid of Nabi Yusuf alayhi salam. That actually never happened. Still, that's how shaitan plays with us. I right, do this for a while and then taubat, taubat. The taubat never happened. It happens at the end. At the end of the story, it happens at the end. Which again shows the entire mission of prophets. What, do, what are prophets sent for? You know, so when they say, Oh, our Father, ask Allah to forgive us. And Nabi Yaakob says, I will ask Allah to forgive you. That's all prophets want. They want that people's souls be saved. That's all they want. Right? Nothing else. You know, so even if the worst of their enemies were to come to them to say shahada, accept it. And that happened in the case of Rasulullah when Hind, right, Hind bin Utbah, Right, she was the one who had commanded the killing of Sayyidina Hamza, the beloved uncle and also brother in witnessing. And Sayyidina Hamza was uncle and brother of Rasulullah wasallam, Brother in witnessing. They had the same um, mother in witnessing. Right? Uh, that, that she had commanded not just the killing of Sayyidina Hamza, but the entire mutilation of the body of Sayyidina Hamza. Right? So, and she came the Shahada. She came to Rasulullah with the Shahada. And she was of the Muslimas. And she is of the Sahabiyat. So when we speak about her, we speak about Sayyidah. 
She said, Sayyidatina Hind bin Otuba, someone who killed Sayyidina Hamza in that way, before she became a Muslim. MashaAllah. Prophets, there is no, there, there is no grudge. There is no hatred. Right? But it is just that they see the souls around them and every soul needs to be saved. Regardless of what these people have done to them. MashaAllah. The self is like really in service of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We all sometimes like our own family don't want to forgive. I know what they did also. I cannot forgive my own family. And this one is like, subhanallah, subhanallah, <laughs> the level that, uh, of forgiveness. That is, all these occurrences, even though they are not directly responsible for the last one, were the consequences of their previous unethical behavior. Right, so it's all a result of their first thing that they did about Nabi Yusuf alayhi salam. Although they thought themselves as innocent and that they had acted well, however, they had behaved unethically in the crisis. Right, first, why were they quick to assume the brother had was guilty once they saw the cup amongst his load? Secondly, they returned so quickly without any research. Right, so these two things they can be blamed for. Lah. Right, so the first thing, right, they, they called their brother a thief. And they did that in front of Nabi Yusuf, right? If he stole, oh, his brother from before also stole. So quick to blame their brother. Right? So, that, so that, there is a blame there. That is, even though they come to the father and they say, oh, our father, our brother stole, and we only see what we saw, and we didn't, we don't, you know, we're not, you know, guardians over the unseen. They had put no effort <laughs> at all. And they were so quick to accept that their brother is a thief. Right, they did try to take one of us in his place. And it was said that it was the oldest brother who had said that. Right, the oldest brother had said, take one of us in his place. Because the oldest brother was the one who felt, who felt it lah, right, the most. Right, the most guilt with the father. But the rest of them like, whatever, take ah, Benjamin. Don't care. <laughs> and it's so not, not our fault. <laughs> Subhanallah. Right, so, and they had come back so quickly without any research. So the oldest brother is still there. Right, so the, so the, older, the oldest brother shows his sincerity that he does not take his, you know, uh, pledge to his father or his promise to his father lightly. Uh, so he stated that he kept himself there right, to ensure that if there's any possibility of bringing back Benjamin, he will bring back Benjamin. Right, thirdly, they might have negotiated on the penalty for theft. Right, one selfish ego seeks to, to, to present evil acts as beautiful in order to justify the guilt. Right, this is something human, human. Right, so whenever, whenever, like, like subhanAllah, you know, they have done something wrong, then something right happens, or not right, but something truthful happens, then they ride on the truthful, truthful part. And whereas there was an entire wrong deed that happened at the side, a big wrong deed, but ignore all that, and then talk about this one, small thing. You know, it's just human, human. So the whole story of Nabi Yusuf, as you mentioned over and over again, is a story of human Interactions, human society. Right, so you don't really see that many um, talk that, that much talk about about miracles and mu'ajiza and so on. No, it's a normal human situation with siblings and family and whatsoever and women and everything. It's all human, right? Human society. So that their their, their self. Right, so Allah, so, so Nabi Yaqub, right, He still reminds them that like, you all have done this about Yusuf, and you all have. Still maintain your lie up till now. You're not stopping if you're lying. So for for sabrun jamil, for sabrun jamil, that means beautiful patience. Right? And, Nabi, and we spoke about this earlier on in the, in the first part of the lessons, right? When 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 they did this, when they did what they did, Nabi Yusuf alayhi salam and Nabi Yaqub respond in the same way for sabrun jamil, which means I choose beautiful patience. So not just patience, but beautiful patience. Right? And here he explains what is beautiful patience. And right? what exactly is beautiful patience? And he turns to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He cries to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He complains to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To cry and complain and turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all part of beautiful patience. Because Nabi Yaqub demonstrated this to us. But to depend on the creation and to run to the creation, to run to other people and to complain and to complain and, and, to, and to cry about it and to wail about it and whatever, to creation, 
is not patience. You can do as much as you want with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Cry all you want. Like, complain all you want. Ya Allah, he Ya Allah, he did so painful. Ya Allah. Ya Allah. I complain to Allah. You know, all you want. Ya Allah, my sons lah. Ya Allah, my this one. Ya Allah. Complain and cry all you want. You are still within the circle of beautiful patience. Uh, you have not shown in patience. But to complain to those who actually cannot help you. In truth. Because the only one who can help you is who? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Rasulullah said, Sayyidina Ibn, Ibn Abbas, his cousin, if you ask, ask of Allah. If you seek help, seek help from Allah. Uh, prophets do that. They point you there. Like, keep going to the correct source. Stop going to those who cannot help you. Stop it. Stop talking to them. Stop telling to them. Why are you so obsessed with the, the creation when they cannot help you in reality? In reality, they can't help you. The only one who can help is Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so Nabi Yaqub, he turns away from them and he says, Sabrun Jamil, I choose beautiful patience. I have been patient for the past 80 years with you all. <laughs> and I want to continue on my beautiful patience with you all. Nabi, Nabi Yaqub and his, you see, his, his composure. Eh? <laughs> you know, Subhanallah. Maintaining patience is a practice prevalent amongst the men of Allah. And a good patience in a believer is the kind that one surrenders oneself to Allah without complaining about his will. It's the definition eh, of good and beautiful patience. To surrender yourself to Allah without complaining about his will, his decree. So you don't at all ever say, Ya Allah, why me? Ya Allah, why did this happen? Ya Allah, why do you allow for this? Ya Allah... Uh, questioning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is haram and a major haram it's of the, of the kaba'ir to question Allah's decree and who are you to question Allah's decree you're a slave and he is the creator right? but when you turn to Allah what are you turning to Allah about you're turning to him to, 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 to cry out to him of the pain that you feel or the sadness that you are enveloped in the grief that has come into your heart and then you turn to him, asking him to remove it. And asking him to solve it. Asking him uh, 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 to give you strength to get through this. That is how you turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? But you embrace what has happened. And you, you accept it. You must, and you must accept it. Right? Because there is a hadith whereby the one who has displeasure with Allah's decree, then they have earned Allah's displeasure. But the one who has contentment with Allah's decree, they have earned Allah's contentment. So what you want from Allah, that is what you show. Right? To Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Nabi, Nabi Yaqob, you know, he, this is a tragedy. That now three, three sons missing. <laughs> like, where are all these sons? No, subhanallah. They are those strong in controlling emotions and turning to Allah for comfort. And this is a training from very young. It is a training. And we must train ourselves. Lah. And as old as we are, we must train ourselves to stop depending on the creation. And to suffice with just running and turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hasbunallah wa ni'mal wakil. Say it 70 times every morning and every evening. It will help you be completely independent of the creation and completely dependent on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hasbunallah wa ni'mal wakil. Allah is enough for me and He is the best of those whom I entrust my affairs to. I will say in the morning 70 times, in the evening 70 times. 70. 70. Hasbunallah wa ni'mal wakil. Hasbunallah wa ni'mal wakil. You can Hasbunallah wa ni'mal wakil. You can do it 70 times in the morning. Or at minimum three. And if you're a small number. Eh? <laughs> like minimum three. Uh, but another, another riwayat, 70. Right? Morning and evening. Right? And with the intention to free yourself of uh, dependence. Right? To any of Allah's creation. Free yourself of dependence. Um, mashallah, and this gives people strength. That's how you have strength when you, are, when you have become independent of other people. They don't affect your emotions. They don't. Because you are firm and you are grounded in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inshallah. 
Asallahu an ya'tiyani bihim jami'a Asallahu an ya'tiyani bihim jami'a I hope that Allah will bring all of them to me And here with his adab to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala And here's his, um, his etiquette with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I hope Is of saying Allah will bring them all back to me Because you don't command Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so the adab of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the, the etiquette of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is inshallah. Inshallah, I hope, ya Allah, I hope. I hope you forgive me, ya Rab. I hope that you bless whatever we have done, ya Rab. I hope you accept, ya Rab. Because you are not one to command Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You see, inshallah, 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 we have hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so I hope. Man of Allah, the man of Allah never despairs in the ability of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You see the entire thing about prophets, their entire conversation from start to end is Allah, Allah, Allah. Every prophet in the Quran you find this. Every prophet. The entire, all they talk about is Allah. That's, that's, that's why the prophets lah. <laughs> they were sent to tell people about Allah. So the, all of everything they see is Allah. Everything. The Nabi Musa, Nabi Ibrahim, Nabi Adam, Nabi Noah, every single one of them. No matter what the problem they have in their life that they're going through, no matter what try, conversation they're having with the, with the people, it is, it is centered around Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as followers of prophets, inshallah, Right, we should be doing that as well. Right, we should be doing that as well. Right, so you know, um, like that when and this is how we we learn from Nabi Ibrahim alayhi salam when he tried to speak to his people. And right? when I'm hungry, he's the one who feeds me. Allah feeds me. When I am sick, he is the one who cures me. Allah is the one who cures me. And right? so that's the first thing we should do when they fall sick. Should we say, "Come, sit up, read Fatiha into the water, ask Allah to cure you, drink, drink the water." Right, and then you give them medicine if you want to give them medicine. Right, right, but, but link the heart to the one who actually cured them. Not the medicine, Allah. Right, the medicine is a means. That's what it is. It's a means. But it's not the cause. It's not. It, does, it did not cause the, 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 the cure. Allah is the one who cures. And subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, and, and teach them du'as of cure. Allahumma yashfini, Allahumma yashfini, Allahumma yashfini, Allahumma yashfini. لا شاف إلا شفاء يا رب. There is no cure except except your cure, ya Rab. I make du'a, make du'a, make du'a. Teach them to make du'a. Right, Subhanallah. So to to in you know in tarim, mashallah. What is all mashallah? Like these people, um, whenever they fall sick, they don't go to the to the to the. They have no medicine, <laughs> no medicine. They just take water, read Fatiha, drink. Right, if the if the sick sickness is still there. Right, they will go to the well, there are their wells in Dari, when the wells are all um, blessed wells. Lah. Right, so they take the water from the well, right, and they will, they will read like Yasin and Baqarah and Bismillah, whatever. They do all kinds of surahs into the water and they beef the water. <laughs> and that's it. And then they cure. Allah cures them. But yakin, yakin, eh, mashallah, eh. <laughs> it's like the man in Surah, the, um, the Sahaba, the Sahaba in Surah Fatiha, uh, Sayyidina Sa'id al Khudri. Right, there was a king who was bitten by a scorpion, and all he did was read Fatiha and spit right, on the on the sting of the scorpion, and the sting went away. Spit was cured by the spit of the Sahabi. Right, on it's, it's in Tafsir Surah Fatiha, and the story. So whenever I teach Surah Fatiha, is the first story I will tell them and the kids. Lah, and the story of Abu Sa'id Al Khudri and the king and the scorpion. Right, he just read Surah Fatiha, spit, cured. Subhanallah, but yakin lah, yakin dia, yakin is yakin eh, mashaAllah. There's a story of, but I'll come back to the story to the class, inshaAllah. There's a story of a, of a, of a sheikh, you know, whereby, um, uh, uh, you know, I think it was Imam Al-Haddad, if I'm not wrong, one of the sheikh, one of the mashaykh, whereby he, whereby he would actually recite, you know, like a list of surahs and ayats, right, to actually do ruqya right, over, over people and to remove the, the, the spirits right, from them. He would recite and, then the, and, they, and they would always run away. They are terrified whenever these ayats are recited. They will, they will leave the body and they will run away. I said, there was one of his students, you know, who had memorized, they followed him around, memorized the ayats that he would, mem that would recite. So once his teacher had gone off for hajj and there was a possession in the area. So they were like, hey, where's the sheikh? Where's the sheikh? 
They couldn't find a, se- a sheikh. So the student was like, I, I, I know the ayats. <laughs> I memorized them. They said, okay, okay, okay come, 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 come. Can you do it for us? So, so the student came and he recited the ayats that the shisha would always recite. And then the person who was being possessed can turned to the student and said, in the voice of the thing, <laughs> in the voice of the thing that was inside of him, said in that voice, huh, same verses, different heart. <laughs> oh, and then the, you didn't, you didn't go. The thing stayed. Same verses, different heart. The yakin lain. Uh, different, not not the tongue of that sheikh, your tongue. Tak pakai. <laughs> and not the 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 the, the spirit was the jinn wasn't wasn't affected at all. Not scared because the yakin not there. <laughs> Subhanallah, so this lah. So just said this. This why it is said that the Fatiha of Omar, Sayyidina Omar. Right? It's not like your Fatiha, right? Because Sayyidina Omar used to recite not the Fatiha Basmala. He used to recite Basmala into the water and just. Uh, cure people with that. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Kasi. Cure. <laughs> no, mashallah. His Bismillah is not like my Bismillah. <laughs> si Allah. <laughs> Awa yakin eh. <sighs> ya Allah, Ya Rabbi. How to reach that level eh. <laughs> they all they save so much money. <laughs> There's no expenditure, nothing. Subhanallah. Mashallah. Um, but we're not thinking of money eh now. <laughs> Silah, the niyan. Salah. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Uh, usually when I I think about it about the Quran and eh, mashallah when I teach the children can my syllabus follows the Quran so I go from Fatiha and I'll talk about whatever is Surah Fatiha. And I, from Bismillah to Alhamdulillah. Then I'll go from the back of the Quran. The, the Quran, the first Surah you come to is Surah Nas. And that Surah talks about the, 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 the Khannas, and the Shaitan, and the, the, the whispers and whatever. The second Surah talks about Sihr. The Surah Fala. <laughs> from the back of the Quran, I mean, the past two months, I've been talking to them about Shaitan and, 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 and magic. I hope the parents don't judge me. I they go through the Quran, but the last two surahs is, is shaitan, 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 for an entire month, surah Nas. And then, sehir, 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 surah Balak. I don't know. Right, so, and I was thinking to myself, I would bring a lot of isihara also, about it, like, doing this, the syllabus in this way. And because I have to go from the back, because that's what they memorize. Like, I have to speak to them about surahs that they're familiar with. I can't go to some random surah and then they have not memorized it. Everybody knows Surah Nas and Surah Falak. <laughs> Again. So, I, I did think about it a lot. I did a lot of istikhara, right? And then, and I realized that the answer was right there in the tafsir. The surah itself has the answer. How do you bring this? Because these are facts of life. They are facts of life. Right? So, you don't call them monsters, right? But you call them the unseen world, the, the jinn. The jinn. They exist, yes. They exist, right? But, we are not afraid of them. Uh, because the problem is the fear of them. Uh, that's the problem. These things exist. Yes, they do. Right? So the khannas in the tafsir has a snout that comes out, you know, and, and then the khannas is a, is a creature, right? They, they're everywhere. They're everywhere. Right? But we're not afraid of them because we have the weapon of zikr. Uh, so you do what the Quran tells us to do. So in Surah, Fa- in Surah Nas, when Allah says, Qul, a'uzu bi rabbin nas, rabb, malikin nas, malik, ilahin nas, ilah. Right? Allah is rabb. Rabb means what? I play game with them actually. Right? Rabb means what? The one you do are to. That is rabb. Ya rabbana, ya rabbana. Right? The one who gives you everything. Whatever you need, Allah can give you. So you feel scared that you think that something in, in the room with you, right? some jinn or what in the room with you, to ask Allah. The jinn is terrified of Allah. Uh, they cannot come near you. Uh, it ask Allah to protect. Uh, say, say not monsters, jinn. And jinn, who is the king of the jinn? Again, the Malik. 
Uh, who is the king of the jinn? Who is the king of the jinn? Who can control and lock up all the jinn? Uh, Kausar. Kausar. Kausar kan? Who can lock up all the jinn in Ramadan? And put them in the jail? Who is the who does that? Take all the shaitan and the monsters and the jinn and whatsoever. It's more all jinn lah. It's more all jinn. And lock in the jail in the whole of Ramadan. Who is the who does that? Who? Who can do it? Who? Who is oh, the most powerful, powerful? Allah! Allah can do it! Uh, so this, th and that is our heart. Assure them. Uh, that is monsters say jinn lah. Call it jinn. Technically, they are monsters lah. <laughs> they are, they are. Any, but but the, the whole the whole thing is to teach them no fear, do not fear them. Uh, you only fear Allah. I mean, you fear disobeying Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. But don't be scared of them. They want to disturb you, right? You go and eat the kursi. Ha! Huh, see what happened to them. <laughs> uh, they all become small, come fly, and they run away. I told them that. Uh, so it means you 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 strengthen them with their belief in God. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. The king, uh, Al-Malik, the king is the one who will lock them up. And he is the ilah. He is the God. The Surah Nas treat attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Rabb, the one that you ask. The king, the one that you obey. The God, the one that you worship. Right? Three, three aspects of our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Surah Nas saja, mashallah. Right? Dala, the one that you, that you ask. The one that you must obey and the one that you worship because he created you and he created everything around you. Mm. And in Surah Falak, it further emphasizes Min ma khalaq, uh, from the evil of what Allah created. Uh, and then the scholars will give an example of like if you, you know, if a king, right? If a king were to invite you to his palace for a banquet, and outside the king's palace, there are huge dogs right, barking at anybody who tries to come to the palace. Right. Some people come to the palace and they see the barking dogs, they run away. They don't approach and they miss out on the banquet. Some people come to the palace, they see the barking dogs, start throwing stones at the barking dogs, trying to get them to go away. But it makes the dogs even stronger right, and more fierce and they get scared of the dogs. And some people, they come to the palace and they call on the king uh, and they ask the king to get rid of the dogs. <laughs> right, so the dogs, the shayateen are the dogs and Allah is the king and he has invited you to his banquet of Islam. Right, so when the shayateen come in between, like you ask Allah, get rid of them. A'udhu billahi minash shaytani rajim. Gone. <laughs> you, know, subhanallah. you don't try and tackle them head on. <laughs> you, know, you can't. You know, and you don't run away from the religion because of them. Uh, but you ask the owner of them <laughs> to throw them away. And Allah can do that. But it's really goes back to our yakin. But from a young age, kena, kena, kena teach. Ayat to kursi. Surah Falak, Surah Nas. Right? Read this and yakin. Ay, yakin, Bismillah. Nothing can disturb you. Nothing can, can, can come to you. you. You are confident, inshaAllah. Allah is the one who protects you. Shalom. So in Surah Falak, so, so all the stories, mashallah, there's, just, there's so much, um, so many lessons, uh, the, the Surah. So I, I tend to go through them. The Seher part also, I was like, I was thinking so much because I'm talking to five-year-olds. <laughs> like, you want, should I talk about magic? Should I talk? And then my, my mother was like, hey, they're all, all exposed to spells and, and all kinds of fantasy. Lah, eh? <laughs> I mean, they're hearing all kinds of nonsense out there. Right, so what is truth? Why should we be shy? It's truth. Right, because it was magic that happened on the Rasulullah. They had cast back magic. Right, so so the, these kids are already exposed to a lot, whole lot of fantasy. Right, that's all about witches and wizards and, and spells and whatsoever. Kan? And fairies and pixies and whatsoever. Kan? So at least these are all, all fantasy. At least you bring what is real. Haq. Right? And, and at the end of Surah Falak, the story is Surah Falak, Surah Nas protects you. As they call Mu'awizatin, they are the two protective surahs. They protect you. you know, so, so, I, so I do, I, I have been telling them the story you know, of the hasid. Then now comes in the concept of jealousy. At five years old, I exposed them to the concept of jealousy because they experience jealousy, but they don't know what it is. 
They already experience it as five years old. Eh? They're already jealous. And they see, lah lah, toddler jealous already. You carry another baby, the baby comes to you and pulls the baby away from you. Can kind of, there's already like a, a a jealousy that they have. So teach them what is jealousy. Hasidin iza hasad. Uh, and then, and what jealousy can do to a person and make someone miserable. Because how many adults still adult age cannot handle jealousy? And they destroy themselves and destroy others because of them never learning how to handle jealousy. The Quran that is Rafala talk about it. <laughs> Subhanallah. Eh? <laughs> the Quran is said that we don't, we don't even have to go you know, beyond what is in this book. So much to talk about. You know, and thing about Surah Falak, now I'm going to tell you Surah Falak. And what Surah Falak is that Allah mentions something that is very human. When Allah says, غَاسِقٍ إِذَا وَقَبْ It means from the evil of the darkness when it, when it gets dark. It's natural for a human being to fear darkness. It's natural. Because it's unknown. It is, it is, it is natural. And Falak means daybreak. Because human beings naturally feel relief when they see daybreak, especially in the past when there was no artificial lighting. Right, so when, 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 when the sun sets, it gets darker and darker and darker. And human beings, adult and child, go into fear. You hear the wolf howling, you hear dogs barking, you hear. We all die like cockroach, die like. Tapaya, tapa wolf, tapa cockroach, cockroach and lizards. I don't need it. Oh, can, I, can I handle? Can I handle? Subhanallah. But then when, when you see the first light of the sun, Alhamdulillah. Hey, this animal will go away. Oh, inshallah. So the Falak speaks about that. It's natural for a human being to fear. It's natural. So human being, pray and seek protection from the one who brings the light. And he's the same one who created all these dangerous animals. Min sharri ma khalaq. From a darkness as it gets darker and darker. And then from the evil of, of the those who cast magic. And then from the evil of those who have a bad heart. Those who have envy in their heart. So you see how the whole surah, you know, mashallah, it goes from dangerous animals, right? And then to darkness, then to magic, and then to evil people. And they are the worst of the evil of Allah's creation. Evil people. <laughs> Even worse than all the cockroaches and the, and the, and the, and the, and the wolf. La. Right, but, but this is how I will teach them. La. Right. So you, like, not, not you, but inshallah, a human being can be, of course you call them wolves. The, the, the human being who is a wolf is more evil than the real wolves, as we see in Nabi Yusuf's story. Right, as, as Nabi Yaqub, we know that the wolf are the brothers, not a real wolf. Right? The wolf that devoured and, and tried to get rid of Nabi Yusuf are the brothers. They are the wolves. And so to have complete trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there is nothing more than placing all hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and turning completely to his wisdom feeling his existence and his endless compassion, subhanahu wa ta'ala. It brings connection and love to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, uh, uh, it is a feeling that fills the heart of the elites of believers and becomes more true and profound than the reality that they see, hear and touch. Right? So whenever they have hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we see their love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inshallah. For suddenly he knows the state that Nabi Yaqub was in and knows what lies beyond events and tests. He lets everything take place at its appropriate time and his purpose is fulfilled according to his wisdom, Allah's wisdom. So Allah's timing, Allah's permission, Allah's will, whatever Allah wants. So sometimes you make dua, 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 dua. It's not happening. Alhamdulillah. Allah's timing, Allah's will, right? Trust Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, I'll stop there for today, inshallah. There's a question here, is it? Um, how to be very yakin, eh? how to increase your yakin in Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. The first thing, you must have a weary of la ilaha illallah. You must be doing some amount of 
La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. Because that will remove connections to the creation. And you'll have, because la ilaha illallah, nothing, 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 except Allah. I do, there's no God, there's none that I worship, there's none that I depend on, except Allah. That's the first thing. You must have, a, have, a, have an amount, like at least a hundred a day, of doing la ilaha illallah. Right, in the Zohar time, if you want to do it, I usually read, um, uh, La ilaha illallah, al-malak al-haq al-mubin. La ilaha illallah, al-malak al-haq al-mubin. La ilaha illallah, al-malak al-haq al-mubin. That's the Zohar time that, that, that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us. Zohar time you read. If you want to do it, lah. But if you do something simple, morning, La ilaha illallah, a hundred times. Some people, they do ten times after every sonat. Right? So, and amounts, lah. And amounts. Right? It's, the, the, the zikr of La ilaha illallah cannot be underestimated. One of the strongest zikr. Especially with your relationship for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even the zikr of Ya Allah, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, Ya Allah. Uh, the repeating of the word Allah, Allah, Allah. Right? In the night helps a lot in your yakin with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then of course, classes of Quran. In Quran classes. It's all about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It helps you with your yakin. Okay, mashallah. We'll stop there for today. Wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. So inshallah, uh, we'll meet again after Ramadan. Eh? Uh, inshallah. Um, throughout Ramadan, uh, for myself personally, every Ramadan I have my own um, programs. Right? So they're all on my Zoom. Uh, inshallah, I'll, I'll post them out soon. Lah. But every Ramadan, um, because the way of our teachers is that they will always change all their classes into Quran. They didn't to do that, so it, um, in the mo so I've been I mean I began this years ago about three or four years ago. Uh, Havi Omar has uh, a series online. It is called uh, it is called Al Qasas Al Haq, right, which means true stories, right? And what he does is that he goes through the Quran, but he jumps, you know, um, and he just goes right to the stories in the Quran and he analyzes them and the lessons behind them. Uh, so this actually this this. This Ramadan is the fifth season. <laughs> I've done five seasons already. And it's the fifth season I of his um, uh, series of true stories in the Quran. And it is so profound now. So profound. So basically what I do is I translate. Mm. I translate his... But I speak in English lah, the entire time. Uh, but it's basically a translation of his, of his classes. And then that's in the evening, in the morning, I do um, verse by verse from Juz Amma. Mm. So... Last year, the whole of Ramadan, we only begin this last year Ramadan lah, verse by verse. So again, from Habib Omar, Habib Omar every Ramadan he will do tafsir every morning after subuh, sampai uh, shuruk. You know, it was the most what, very challenging lesson because they were in tarim they will stay up the whole night in ibadah they will, they will pray the whole night worship and Quran and lessons and whatsoever the whole night, and then sampai subuh, and they will pray subuh jemaah. Then they will stay awake do their wirid their zikir, and then they have a lesson. Tafsir lesson until shuruk. Then they will pray shuruk, they pray shrak, and then they will sleep. They will sleep for about three hours, four hours. They will wake up around 11 or 12 and pray doha. And then they continue that day. And they have class and everything. And so they, they decided that Ramadan, they all like to validate their schedule. Because the whole night they are worshipping. So it was so difficult that kind of class. Of course, like, like, the whole night they are like, you know, awake. <laughs> and then when Subo comes in, like Subo, we see a. Uh, they must stay up until it's shuro. <laughs> into a class. Like we'll stand up, we'll stand, just listen down. So you won't fall asleep. You know, it was so, so difficult, inshallah. But basically, that, that, that classes, right, he's, he, he went from the back of the Quran, right, um, from Juz Amma. And he, right now, he's already in the 20, I think 26 Juz. <laughs> it's really quite, uh, quite a hit. Uh, last Ramadan, I covered Surah Fatiha and Surah Nas. So this Ramadan, you see where he gets to. I try and cover a full surah. You know, it's, it's Falak and Ikhlas. But it's closely following, almost word for word, his uh, classes. I translate. I right, my classes. Well, they all have a different tasting. Now. When I was hearing him teach this one, this, this lesson today, he, he, went, he went into so much depth about trusting Allah. You know, and only turning to Allah 
so much debt. And actually, uh, he went to a long dua at the end of his class. And said, only, only like my shayi can this kind of thing. So. <laughs> and he said, amin, 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 dua, amin, amin. Okay, for everybody, okay, amin, amin. <laughs> Mashallah. Yes, mashallah. Fatiha and Allah is going to have a nafi and we're amal and khas, Mr. Alim, Mudala and Fuda, we serve you, 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 we serve you,